NSC has reapplied for an NOC from SEBI and that can pave the path for its IPO soon. And we'll talk about NSC's IPO in detail in Nugget section today. Hi everyone, welcome to the update of 30th August. Now markets seem to have shut aside completely the bonus announcement from Reliance. The 5th September event is a no event. Reliance has the majority. It will pass. The bonus will be issued. And not just Reliance, but Network 18 and the stock I missed yesterday, TV18, all three stocks fell today. If I was Mr. Amani, I would be a little worried looking at the tepid response from the market from the big, big announcement from the AGM. This is where I expected Reliance to be. And this is where Reliance is in today's heat map. Not a good sign. Pharma continues to rock. Today it was a turn of Cipla to go up 2.25%. Bajaj Finance and Bajaj Finser, the twins, have been rising after a long time, close to 6-7 months, 8 months ever since Geo Finance probably debuted. Software was the best contributor, banking was in the green as well. But since Reliance fell, oil and gas was dragging the markets. But the graph clearly is in the favor of bulls yet again. Pharma, it is among the best sectors this month. Most stocks were up anywhere between 1-2%. to A straight line when it comes to 52-week high-low. The other sector which made investors rich consistently this month was Telecom. Bharti, Airtel, Indus Tower, they have gone up significantly. While Nifty is appearing as 0.33% up for the day, it had a very strange pattern. Look at the range, 25,200, 25,250. Literally a 45 point range. So for the first time, Nifty did cross 25,250, that too multiple times. But towards the end of the day, a shy short of 25,250. But a new closing all-time high, nevertheless. Bank Nifty also had a very narrow range. 51,310, 51,450. Hardly 130 points. Volatility also was not very high. Now, one point to note is, in the month of August, for the last 12 days, Nifty has closed in the green. I don't remember the last time when Nifty had such a run-up. Today, Reliance fell. TCS was up. HDFC fell. ATL, ICICI, Infosys, all of them were up 1%. Despite the fall in Reliance and HDFC Bank, Nifty was still up 0.33%, typically indicative of a good market bet. And despite HDFC falling a percent, Bank Nifty was up 0.4%. Now in terms of FI and DI data, 90,000 crore bought, 84,000 sold. Now this was an extraordinary day because there was an event called MSCI rebalancing. The new entrants were purchased. The ones which are going out, they were sold out. As a result, huge volumes and huge turnover. Net value was 5,300 crore only after the rebalancing. Apple latest prices are below 3.5 trillion. But yesterday, Apple became the first company to cross 3.5 trillion dollar mark. Most of the US stocks are looking green. Gold fell a bit, silver fell a bit. Bitcoin is below 60,000. Crude has cracked 3.5%. Today, the best contribution came from TCS, Airtel, Bajaj Finance, NTPC, M&M, Sun Pharma, ICICI. Literally, each and every stock had good volumes. Not all of them went through rebalancing, of course. I talked about the market breadth earlier. 13 stocks down, 37 up. Next 50 also, 17 down, 33 up. The best performers were Shri Cement, Gale, TVS Motor, Bosch, United Spirits. Volumes were fantastic here as well. What fell today, Mariko, Adani Power, Avenue Supermarts, Geo Financial, Dabur, REC, PFC, Adani Total. Nifty stocks, look at the pattern of ATL. 8 continuous days up. But ATL now is clearly in the overbought zone as per the RSI values. Look at the sudden spike of late. ICICI was up as usual for the whole day. ATL went up, then became stable. SBI came down, HDFC came down. TCS went up, stayed stable, then went up. Reliance came down whole day. Infosys consolidated, then shot up. LNT came down and then consolidated. So mostly a consolidation day for the top stocks. Now in the banking pack, I have also added Bajaj Finance, PFC and IRFC for contrast. So Bajaj Finance opened down and then went up. Today if you see the nifty line is a straight line. That's because nifty hardly any volatility was there. IRFC, there are Two dividends mentioned here. Look at the bull run in Bajaj Finance. Only one red day in the last 8-9 days. Nearly similar to Airtel. Bank of Baroda has hardly done anything this month. Same with Kotak, more reds and greens. Bank Nifty levels are not showing overbought. This is true for most banks right now. For example, HDFC Bank. ICICI just seems a little overbought right now. 
but probably it will peak somewhere around these levels. Bajaj Finance is looking overbought. PFC just getting there. IRFC is actually about to get into oversold zone. Defense had a better day today. Select stocks only. HL was up. BL was up. Cochin Shipyard fell in a heap 3.5% down. I'll talk a bit more about it. Solar Industries up. GRSE up 3%. Harad Dynamics up. Then Cochin Shipyard, what happened was I sold Cochin Shipyard half stocks here. Then it went up. Somewhere around here, I sold remaining inventory also. And then it started falling, falling, falling. Somewhere around this period, I was in about 5 6,000 profit. So I bought the stocks again. I'll revisit again on Monday now. So the strategy of selling early in the day and buying back later part in the day seems to be working. Just for a recap, banks had fantastic volumes. The gains were minuscule, however, mainly because HDFC was down. Defense was up 1.1%. Metals today, Jindal Stainless was up 8% out of the blue. Only Hindustan Zinc had low volumes. Lack of interest after the dividend even getting over. And it fell another 2% today. IT sector up as usual. Oracle is back in the greens. Energy sector was up a little. Torrent Pharma was up 5%. Oil and gas Reliance was down. As a result, the pack was down. But other stocks were in the green. Reliance is 6.6% away from the green zone. One good day and that should turn green. This kind of strength seems like the FIs did a lot more than the MSCI reject in the name of the reject today. No good news for the consumption pack. Just as cigarette stock Godfrey Phillips continues to go up. Now I'm being tempted into buying this stock for some trading gains. Maybe try it out. Compared to 14 sectors yesterday, 24 sectors were up. So good market bet. Tata Motors was up a lot yesterday. It was down today. So was Maruti. Today there was something in the liquor stocks. Nearly all liquor stocks were up a lot. Redico Khetan up 7%. Globus Spirits 20%. The biggest stock, however, which is Varun Beverage is not an alcohol stock. Down half percent. Chemical stocks recovered a bit. RVNL got included in MSCI, so it was up a lot, 5% today. This may correct on Monday. NBCC was up 10% on announcement of bonus. Seems like profit booking took over today, 4% down. Good gains in cement. Insurance companies, there is very high chance that the GST council will reduce or remove the taxes. So this sector has already been going up. Today, the smaller players were up. Investment banking, the top four players corrected today. Angel one is in the red zone. Nippon has ceded the second place to Motila Loswal now. Minor uptick in the heavy machinery sector. Real estate sector was good today. Prestige 5% up. Phoenix Mills 3.5%. September is a day away. We are heading into the festive season now. That is all about jewelry. Kalyan Jewelers up 1%. Titan up a bit. Page Industries picked up today. Page Industries is the only green stock in textiles and apparel. My trades for the day, I bought a bit of TCS. This is for short to medium term only. I bought an alcohol stock, associate alcohol. This is the third one in the portfolio. This is for long term. I already have Redico Khetan and Bira in pre-IPO. I averaged lower and bought more on Supreme. I bought Cochin Shipyard, but that is after selling Cochin Shipyard. Net net, it was a profitable day. I sold off Dalmia Cements today, slight loss. I bought it when Ultra Tech had acquired India Cement. I thought this might get acquired also. This was blocking money since last one and a half, two months. Rail Vikas, the event was over today, so I booked profits. Now Rail Vikas is about 8-9% away from its lifetime high. I might buy it again soon. But for now, Monday, I'm expecting profit booking. Overall, an investment day as well as made some profit. In this month, I noticed today there is not a single red in terms of overall day. So good month comes to an end. Time for the nugget for the day, National Stock Exchange. If you have followed NSC, then around 2015, there was a scam called co-location scam. In a nutshell, what happened was some of the staff members of NSC colluded with some brokerages and gave them preferential access to data, which means the stock tick stock prices, they got maybe a second ahead of other people. For that, what they did was some of the servers of those companies were located in the premises of NSC. Some of them got ultra fast optic fiber connectivity to NSE servers, which is not usually allowed for most people. This became an unfair advantage for some of the brokerages and they printed or minted a lot of money. An inquiry was ordered on NSE, which has been going on for a decade now. NSE has already taken a lot of corrective actions, but SEBI has not been satisfied and SEBI has rejected their DRHP several times. 
Now there was a PIL in Delhi High Court why SEBI is not allowing NSE to go live. So SEBI had told Delhi High Court earlier this month on August 14 that no fresh request for NOC for NSE IPO has been made and the delay is on the exchange side from NSC. Yesterday NSC as a result filed another request. Now unless SEBI can find another new reason to discourage NSE from going live as an IPO, it will have to give an NOC after which NSC will file an DRHP. That may take one month or two months time, but probably by end of this year or early next year, we might see the IPO. Quick contrast, Unlisted Zone is a site where I see the pre-IPO related data. For NSE, the market cap is 3,6900 crore based upon the price in the unlisted markets, which is around 6,200 rupees per share. If you go to BSC, their market cap is 40,000 crore only. Nearly seven and a half or eight x is the market cap of nsc as per the unlisted market or the pre-ipo market look at the price jump also somewhere around 2023 the price was 3800 and then it skyrocket this is where market started expecting that finally nsc ipo will see the light of the day now even at these levels the p ratio is okay 36.51 the p of bsc is nearly double 65 and nsc does lot more business than bsc as an exchange now the next question would be who owns nsc the biggest holders are lic 10.7 percent arada investment mauritius 5 percent stock holding corporation of india 4 percent sbi capital 4 percent veracity investments 4 percent these are the biggest holders i think the Threshold is 1% for disclosures. Individuals hold 16%, corporates 2%, unlisted corporates 15.5%, insurance companies 19%, out of which 10.7% is LIC alone. Foreign holding is 37%, FIIs, FPIs, venture capital funds 3.69%. In this individual category, out of the total 50 crore odd shares of NSC, I myself own about 200 shares in pre-IPO of NSC. This is just a quick disclosure. BSC may actually correct once NSC gets listed because BSC is very rich in valuation and NSC is not right now. And I don't think NSC will go for a 8,000, 9,000, 10,000 kind of level for the IPO. It will probably go for a price range somewhere around 4,500 to 5,000 only. And in that, a lot of these players, especially LIC and SBI may exit a part of their stake. Let's see now if SEBI gives the NOC to NSC. Hope this was useful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.